Thank you for calling. Press 6 to continue. For parts, press 2. Well, trying to get a hold of the Subaru dealer this morning. It said they open at 8. It's 8.10, so I'll try again later. And as if yesterday was not cold enough, yesterday when we left it was zero, today dropped down a little bit, negative 8. That's great. They better have this kit in stock. Subaru parts? Hey, I'm looking for a steering rack seal kit. I have a part number here whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Part number is 34190. Uh, not something I carry in stock. Okay, mm how far out would that be? Be until Wednesday of next week. All right, guys, here's the plan. I just ordered up the rebuild kit. It'll be here Wednesday for the steering rack that we were working on last night. So that's gonna be in Wednesday. I'm gonna go ahead and order a Torque Solution solid shifter linkage kit. So it's gonna replace this whole entire thing. This whole guy with the stock junky plastic bushings that are very, very worn out. Order that in, that should be here on Tuesday or Wednesday as well. I'm gonna go ahead and tie up a few loose ends from last night. So the first thing we need to do is get the cooling system bled. That's super easy to do. But to fire this thing up, of course there is no power steering fluid in it. I'm gonna pop off the belt for the alternator and power steering pump. Last thing I wanna do is burn up the power steering pump and then have to replace that as well. And after that cooling system is bled, the motor's gonna be warm. So then we can go ahead and knock out an oil change. Okay. All right, bleeding the cooling system, easy to do. Let's fire it up. This is also gonna be the first start at all since fixing all of the vacuum leaks that we had on this thing. Let's see how she fires. Fires right up. So we're gonna turn the heat all the way up, turn the blower all the way up, and we're gonna let her run. And you'll see here in a second, she's gonna start pushing bubbles out of the funnel. Oh, there she goes. So we'll do this until there's no bubbles coming out and the cooling system will be bled. Cooling system is bled. Now let's treat old girl to a good old fresh oil change. Before I do this, I'm gonna make sure that I don't see any oil leaks from it sitting overnight. Now, of course, we know that rack was leaking pretty good, but everything else looks dry. I was worried the pan was leaking, but the rack is right next to the pan, so that makes sense. Let's pray for a nice, clean oil, non-flaky oil to come out of this. Well, it's definitely old. But that's about all I see is just old. Pop this filter off. Let's do the scary thing. The thing I never want to do. Probably a good idea to do so though. We know nothing about this car, really. I've never done oil change on it in the couple of years I've owned it. Let's slice this filter open, man. See how she's looking. This will tell us if anything silly is going on with the bearings. You can usually tell just based off the oil, but just for extra peace of mind, you know. One of the best things I ever bought was this filter cutter. I used to try to slice them open with a pair of tin snips. Dude, it's a pain. So all you gotta do is you just rotate the filter around, a couple of revolutions, tighten it a little bit, and eventually the top will pop off. Like so. All right, how are you looking? So the first thing I'm gonna check is down in here. Dump the oil out. Just make sure nothing funny is sitting down in there. It's about as clean as could be. And then you can check inside of here. Make sure there's no flakes that are stuck in here. Yeah, this thing is gorgeous, man. We're good to go. I love it. Let's toss on a new filter. 
Wix number five, what is it? 57712 is the Subi Wix number. This car would be a perfect candidate for a dry ice blast underneath. Just make it nice and clean again. Get all the gunk off of here from the rack leaking for years. Probably for years, it looks like. And it would be quick. Not a month long thing like our Evo 8. You guys know I'm a big fan of VR1, but I am 100% out of 1030 VR1. The local auto parts stores don't carry it. I'd have had to order it in for a stock motor, a stock car, some good old mobile one will do the trick, certainly. Now, just so I don't forget to do this when this car is complete, I'm just gonna do it now. It's fired up, get the oil circulating around for a couple minutes, shut it off, let it cool down and check the oil level. Make sure she topped. Okay. Last fluid I wanna do a quick change on is the trans, but gear wheel for the trans, I'm gonna run the Redline Cocktail. That auto parts store is closed till Monday, today Saturday. So we'll have to do that next week. Engine oil is good, coolant's good. We're making progress. The final issue that we need to take care of on the STI is the ABS light. A company called Autofix sent me out their D1 light scanner. This guy is powered by Autel and it is a much cheaper, I would say, well, let's do some quick math. My Autel was $2,100. This guy comes in at $399. And I wanna test it out for you guys to see if it's even worth buying a two or $2,100 scanner these days. So in the little carrying case, we have the scanner itself. Very nice, powered by Autel, which we all know Autels are the goat. This is a Bluetooth VCI, so we should not need any sort of cable for these two to talk together. I have a feeling this guy's gonna be super handy to have around the shop. It's literally my Autel, but a mini. Let's freaking plug this thing in and see what is going on with our ABS system. So this piece right here, this is the VCI. This plugs in to the OBD2 port right there. Go ahead and click on the ignition. And the nice thing is, we don't even need to be in the car to see what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna click on Subaru, automatic selection. We're in North America and it's gonna automatically read the VIN number on the car so we do not have to do it manually. Alrighty. So we're gonna go diagnostics. Let's just run a full auto scan on this thing. It's gonna scan every computer, every module, ABS, airbag, engine, TCM, everything. So we have three codes in the ABS system and four faults in the airbag system. Let's head on into the ABS and see what is happening. This thing is so freaking handy. Rear left ABS sensor, improper CAN communication that doesn't sound fun to deal with. Lateral G sensor fault that does not sound fun to deal with. Let's go ahead and erase the codes and see if they stay or go. So I erased the codes, rescanned the system, and everything passed with no faults, but I don't really believe that. So I'm gonna head into the ABS system. And the cool thing about this being a Bluetooth unit is we can go around and individually check each ABS sensor to make sure it's reading. So I just went in to the live data in the ABS system right here. And we have all the wheel speed sensors. So if I spin this, okay. We are getting a readout, which is good. That one's reading fine. That one's reading fine. Now that we spun all the sensors or all the wheels, let's read the codes again. So until we can actually go ahead and drive this thing and get the ABS to trigger a code again, we can't really diagnose anything. In total, we had the code 28, which is the rear left ABS sensor. I'll do a visual inspection on that, make sure it's good to go. We had the CAN communication error, which that could be a tricky one to resolve. I'm gonna have to wait and see if that triggers again when we do drive the car. And then we had the lateral G sensor, I think it was called code as well which we can check the live data on that when we go to drive the car. This thing, super freaking handy. I'll go ahead and have it linked down below. 
It has 64 gigabytes of memory, which is plenty of space for any sort of storage on all of these readouts that we're doing. 38 different reset functions and two years of free updates. If you guys wanna pick one of these things up, I'll have a link down in the description box below. Big thank you to Autofix and Autel for setting this out. I appreciate it. Well, we are at a complete dead end as far as mechanical stuff goes until we start getting some parts in the mail. My current goal is to have this entire body and the whole exterior complete by the time those parts come. Let's start getting this thing prepped out for its wrap. There is some pieces that are gonna be painted. And the reason for it is because having a blue bottom side of the hood isn't very cool. Having black inner parts of the fenders isn't very cool. If I was to paint this car, this is the way I would do it. I would spray the insides of the fenders right here, bottom side of the hood, underside of the trunk, and then go ahead, assemble the car and spray it complete. That's just what I would do. So that's what I'm gonna do anyway. I'm gonna pull the hood off, I'm gonna pull the fenders off, I'm gonna pull the trunk off, and we're gonna be painting the pointless areas. But in my opinion, they're still important because of course we do want a nice looking bay. Now this hood, I did have PDR'd. It's still gonna need a little bit of body work. So I'm gonna take care of all of the body work first on these parts. The trunk has a couple holes that we need to weld up and then fill or uh, body work that as well. But first off, let's, let's start knocking out this hood. So this area right up in here, this thing was pretty hammered when I first bought this hood. I brought it to PDR, he straightened it out real quick and I just told him I want it as, I want it close so my filler isn't super thick and it will last. From here, let's just go ahead and grab a marker. I like to mark everything out. So I wanna fill this thing, probably this whole edge. Add that too. All this right here, I'm gonna bring down to bare aluminum and we can get it filled. And yes, this hood is aluminum. Just to make sure there's no other damaged areas on this thing. Oh my gosh, this thing is crusty. Let's go ahead and get it cleaned up. There's literally leaves embedded in the hood. It's gonna need more than water. Thankfully, that is the only damage on this hood. So it should be a pretty simple fix. And I know I've said in the past, I'm not the biggest fan of vinyl wrap on cars, but I have always said that with an asterisk of, it depends on the wrap, you know? If it's a basic boring black or something like that, I don't think it belongs. But if it's something unique where it can't really be painted, then it does belong. That makes sense. <laughs> the whole entire affected area is ground down to bare metal. Filler of choice today. We're gonna to be starting off with the U-pole. Fantastic body filler is what it's called. So we'll start with this, sand, and we'll probably finish, well we will finish with a little bit of U-pole glaze. Always gotta mix your fillers up good because if you look in here, there's a bunch of oil on the top. So that all needs to be mixed on in there. Okay, let's get her mixed up. Didn't put too much harder in there as we have quite a bit to spread today. Hopefully I put enough hardener is the thing. This is like art. Applying filler is actually more difficult than it looks. And I tend to not be very good at it. But that's not bad. Let's let that harden up. As that fully cures, let's start messing around with the trunk. Trunk and the hood are should be the only things that are gonna require body work. Now this is an STI Limited. So when I bought this car, it had 
a pretty janky carbon hood and trunk on it. I ended up selling those. So I picked up this trunk that of course needs a lot of work and it's got holes for the factory wing. I want the factory OEM STI limited trunk clip back on it. And in order to do this right, these holes are gonna have to be welded shut. But first we have some plasti dip to remove and we have a wood screw. That's a quality plug. Two holes there, three holes on this side. Four holes on this side. So I have the holes ground out, bare metal. Let's tack them up, grind it flat and we should be good to move on with filler. So we got all of the holes filled up and ground down. You can see there, no holes left. We need to fill. Before we fill all this black rattle can, it's gotta come off. You wanna help me real quick? While you're in here? Since I know you're not doing anything else today. <laughs> you gotta take that bolt out, son. Even though it is negative six degrees out here right now, I would rather do this out here than do it in my nice warm shop and get junk all over my nice warm shop. Hopefully the air don't freeze. Trunk is sanded down. That's the factory silver. That's some gray that was on top and then the, the rattle can black was what I was concerned with. So that's all sanded off. Now, before that thing gets filled, it needs to get back up to room temp, not negative temp. In the meantime, let's sand this. I should have sanded it a little bit sooner while it was still a touch soft. It knocks down quite a bit easier, but it's fine. It might be a little bit easier if we mount it back up on the car. Guess we'll see. Alrighty, let's get some filler on this trunk so it can start curing up. This is fully sanded down. I knocked it down with 40 grit and now we're gonna go through with some glaze. Glaze the whole entire section and that's gonna make it perfect. And then primer. So this is really just gonna fill any minor stuff. The scratches, any pinholes, things of that nature. So this goes on much, much thinner than the body filler does. So I'm gonna knock this down initially with some 80 grit and then I'm gonna guide coat it and hit it with 180. So this guide coat is gonna tell us things, right? It's gonna tell us our low spots. If I can get this paper to stick, I have to just use a small block for this, unfortunately. Tell us our low spots, tell us our high spots, tell us what needs to be sanded more. Well, so much for keeping the shop clean. This hood is taking quite a bit longer than I thought it would. The trunk is finished up, ready for primer. Hood will be finished up here in a second. I grabbed some 180 for the long block. Blocking it out with the short block when there's that much distance was proving to not turn out good. So let's go ahead. I just knocked it down with 80 grit. I'm gonna go ahead and Guide coat it, block it with 180, and hopefully this is the last time we sand. 
I know there's just going to be a wrap applied over it, but still. I want it to look good. I want it done right. Not only is it going to improve my skills of body work, which definitely need a little bit of love, but if it's even if it's wavy underneath the wrap, it's not going to look good. So, I'm taking my time. We are done with body work and ready for primer. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up with wax and grease. I already blew them off really go with the compressed air. Make sure there's no, no dust in any of the sand scratches. Wipe them down, make sure they're nice and clean. And any of the bare metal areas, so these little guys here, a little stuff there, and then on the hood is all gonna be hit with some acid, some Acid Etch Primer. Just a good corrosion barrier, I guess you'd say. We got our primer here, our junky Harbor Freight gun, Spectrum gun, and we're ready to start spraying. Now, guys, this is why it's so important to mix up your paints and primers. Filler primer especially. All the solids go to the bottom. If we were just to spray the liquids that were on top, it wouldn't even be a filler primer. It'd just be some, pretty much some water coming out of the gun. So get her mixed up for a couple minutes minimum. Well, I guess just until there's no chunks on the bottom. And we can spray probably three coats. Two to, hmm, I'm gonna do three coats. I like three coats. Thankfully, our shop has very, very good insulation good heat. It's 80 or probably 70, 77 degrees in here right now. Got to make up for all the coldness outside. Typically I would just pull these parts outside and do a quick tss, tss, you know, but when it's in the negatives, I don't think it's going to work. So this primer goes four to one and you can reduce it up to 50% if you want with, of course, reducer. We're not going to be doing that. I don't really know why you'd reduce primer, feel free to comment below and let me know why you, why you would reduce a high build 2K primer. So four to one, I'm gonna go eight to two. Well, that's a really full cup. It's gonna be a lot of fun to mix. I tend to strain everything, even though it's primer and we're sanding it. There's still some chunkies, little flakes from the outside of the primer can, where the lid goes, you know, that kind of stuff. That acid etch has to dry for a minimum of 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and spray it on some primer. While the primer's still wet, you can get a pretty good grasp of how your bodywork looks. And I must say I'm impressed. I'm actually very impressed. That's gonna look perfect. Trunk, I decided to primer the whole top side. Had a little bit of a splatter session right there with the primer, not sure what happened, but easily fixable. Wow, this camera's tripping out, too shiny. Easily fixable with a bit of sanding. <laughs> Very concerned. At what temp does diesel gel at? Diesel. Te diesel fuel gels when temperatures fall below 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It is currently zero. No, it went up to one. We're at one degree right now. I don't know why this thing ain't gelling up, especially this morning when it was negative seven. You would think I'd be having problems with my diesel with my Duramax, but she's been a trooper. I might go grab some uh, additive just to be sure. It looks like tomorrow we got a high of 14 and then 18, 24, 28. So by the middle of next week, we'll be good to go and not having to worry about it. But, hmm, cool. Good old Duramax treat me well. And uh, good old STI treat me well as well. I'm gonna do some single stage work, some single stage white, alpine white or whatever that color code is, I forget, on the underside of the hood, insides of the fender, 
underside of the trunk and I think that's about it and then we can go ahead and slap down a vinyl wrap like I said earlier I'm trying to get this thing wrapped by it's gonna be by like Wednesday is when the parts show up if we can do that by Thursday or Friday we should be able to get the Evo back on the lift and get that thing finished up because by then all of the parts that we are waiting for will be here and it's full steam ahead hope you guys enjoyed today's video episode 3 of the STI coming to an end. Good night.